the other one is the IRS. So earlier Samson mentioned that um, sometimes there was a time, I guess 2016, 2017, where people were saying that I don't have any money to pay you for whatever you know service you're providing, but I'll give you these tokens in exchange, right, for your service. And so the IRS's position is that income can be derived from any source, right? So if you are give, if you let's say have you know more ink coins and you're I'm going to pay um, Laren to do something for me, uh, maybe a social media campaign, then those coins are considered income to the IRS, and that means that I technically put a value on it, right? Because I know his work costs this much, and even though those coins have no value then the, the onus is on Laren to pay taxes for this income that I've given him for this work. So a lot of times people are like, oh, well, you don't have to pay taxes because it's a coin, or you don't have to pay taxes because um, it's not cash, it's not money, but there's value to it. So in the IRS's um, um, position, then that is income that tax has to, has to be paid on. And if you are um, an employer trying to pay your employees with coins or tokens, then you have tax obligations as well. Another thing with the IRS is they consider, um, initially they considered virtual currencies as property, right? So that means that the property can increase gain, right? Or lose value, which is a loss. And so the IRS to this day um, continues to uh, issue notices reminding people that they should be claiming these different uh, cryptocurrencies on their um, tax return. A few years ago, the IRS, um, through the Department of Justice, tried to subpoena Coinbase, which is a very large um, crypto exchange, asking them to give them records of all the people who had made $20,000 or more. So obviously Coinbase you know, disputed that, and they appealed, and they went to court for almost two years, and finally the judge decided that they should give some over some information, but not as many accounts as they had initially asked for. But they still had to give away like a, a information for 14, I think it was 14,000 accounts. So the IRS is like, okay, we have all this information, all these different accounts. And then the, you know, I think by March of the following year during the tax season, only like 800 people had claimed <laughs> cryptos on their tax return. They're like, wait, something's not right. So then they sent out another notice reminding people that they, if you are um, transacting with cryptocurrencies, whether for property purposes or because you're gaining, earning income through these coins, you do have to let the IRS know and, um, and claim them on your, uh, your tax return. And the last one is consumer protection. So, um, and this I think applies to all types of, um, of businesses in the sense that if you are offering something to someone that doesn't necessarily exist yet, then you're required to provide it to that person within a reasonable time. So a reasonable time, you know, just varies and it's based on the, you know, perspectives of the different people involved in the transaction. Um, but generally speaking, you know, we, we like to think of a reasonable time being 30 to 45 days. A lot of, in the, a lot of these ICO uh, campaigns, people were saying that, you know, at some point we would offer these, um, we would give you these tokens that you purchased or you would be able to use them in some sort of an ecosystem, but then it never really existed. And so that is something that you have to be mindful of. So CFPB regulates, I guess, um, consumer and financial products, right? They put out a notice too um, because of XRP and oh, I can't remember the other coin, but those were considered financial type coins or financial products. So. I know that for a long time people were really focused on what the SEC was saying about um, investments and securities and all that, but we also have to take into consideration all of the other uh, uh, regulatory bodies that also come into play when you're talking about raising money for, for, for people, raising money from people, the taxes you have to pay, et cetera. Now, just generally speaking, if you are raising capital for a business, that's not taxable income. Um, the capital infusion is not considered income, so you won't get taxed on that, but anything.